Hey, welcome back to Dutch Air Builds. My name is Jerome. Uh, this video is episode number. <laughs> and today I'm going to talk about the electrics and all the stuff you need to get your cafe racer sorted out and make it all nice and tidy. But you will need a few things, and uh, I'm just going to show that to you in this video. Um, if you want to get any stuff you see on this video, please go to caferacerwebshop.com and use the uh, affiliate link in the description below uh, that will help out the channel and it will get you the stuff you need to build your cafe racer so um, let's go straight into it so the first thing you're going to need at least that's what i think is a uh, workshop manual this is by haynes they've got a manual for practically every bike and uh, it's absolutely essential so you can figure out at least how the bike was and what you're going to do to uh, to use it as a cafe racer um so this is all about my gs 450l and i think i have to use oh no use that one sorry now when you see this first time as i did i was pretty uh, scared by it and thought oh my god but you just really have to take the time and start reading this uh following the wires and looking at the wiring loom you've got and then uh, with a little time and effort and just uh, videos like this you should get further and further and uh, get more confident with it so that is one the thing i've done is i've gone from a normal battery to a lithium battery so i can put it underneath the seat the battery i bought was this from ultra bat course I've got this all at caferacerwebshop.com um, please lose, use the link below and you can find this battery it is really tiny and uh, it should really uh, be enough to uh, crank the engine and you can actually uh, build this up so you can connect more pieces together so you can get a stronger battery really nice one but if you get a battery like this so a lithium battery you also need a different charger so you the normal battery charger you use for your bike uh, is useless for a lithium battery. It will, if you put on a normal one on this thing, it'll definitely damage it beyond repair. So you need one, well, just like this or anything other, as long as it's absolutely essential that it is for a lithium battery, as you can see here. So a charger and a battery. Because I use a lithium battery, I cannot use the regulator rectifier that came with the bike. The rectifier uh, will go up to, I think it's um, 14 something volts, 14.8 on the normal one, and for a lithium battery, that is too much. And you will definitely damage your battery if you do not change the rectifier. Now, Rick Electrics is a very good company and they make a, they make these for a lot of bikes um, as they do for the Suzuki GS450 and also I got these at caferacerwebshop.com so that is number thing. now these are pretty expensive parts but if you want to make it your bike nice and clean like I do you really have to go with this because this is so you can mount this upside down and any way you like and uh, that makes it ideal for a cafe racers so um, lithium it is a bit more expensive yeah, if you as soon as you've got all these things, you're you're good to go. So next up is of course the M unit. Now this is the blue M unit, which means it's got Bluetooth Bluetooth capabilities, which is something I really uh, wanted to. I am really happy with this. This is such a cool thing. Uh, it really uh, makes it easier because you can uh, leave out fuses and all sorts of stuff to, which you normally need on a wiring loom, but with this. Uh, it makes it all a lot easier. It is expensive though, so um, that is the only uh, sad thing about it. But other than that, this is great. You can you can really do all sorts of functions with this uh, that will make your bike stand out. There is so much stuff that comes along with this. A bit too much to go into right now. Maybe some other video I will do that uh, once I've got it installed. But for me, this is, uh, this is high tech and uh, it really makes your bike, uh, well, a bit more modern, I think. So the M unit blue. 
find a link for this also. So with the M unit and everything you need to you need to make sure that everything doesn't fry so you need fuses and you need a start of solenoid like this. This is pretty universal. It's got extra fuses in here so uh, that is a great way to uh, hook up the starter and all the other pieces. So a starter solenoid if you want to change it up a bit, there's a ignition, which I ended up getting this. I had a different one, a really cheap Chinese one, but this is stronger. This is uh, less plastic and more metal, and it's a bit sturdier. This is going to go into the side of the um, battery tray, I think. And I got this at Westland Customs, it's a Dutch uh, website. It was uh, not so expensive, it was really good actually, and it's pretty strong. So I'm really happy with that. All right, so there's a switch. What else have we got? If you want to use the M unit, or any bike for that matter, uh, you need buttons. Now you can use the OEM buttons on your motorcycle, on the handles that you've got, but I'm building a cafe racer and I want to change it a bit up, make it all smaller. So I got these, well, I've shown these before, I think. Uh, these are uh, momentum buttons and they light up as they get power. Um, there you are from Hedgehog Garage. EU. The link is in below where you can get them. They're really great. He helped me out big time when I was uh, wiring these up. You have to solder these little wires in at the back. Um, very handy to use, especially with the uh, the M unit or any type of uh, well smart piece like that, because you can uh, give the buttons multiple functions, so a double tap or one or whatever. It's not essential, uh, you can use the ones on your bike, but these are very good, so uh, the buttons. Next up is, so this is heat shrink. Um, the black ones now, I've got some colored ones. Uh, yeah, you really need these to, uh, if you connect wires and you solder them together, you have to uh, make sure they don't short out somewhere. So you need these to connect those wires. You can you can use these. These are not connectors, but these are actually endpoints. They're ferrules, and uh, they are like. Let's show you one. You can put this, at the end of the uh, wire, and then you can really like, especially with the uh, Mo unit, you can put it in the holes, and it's uh, just a, a nice and neat way to uh, have a strong end of your uh, wire. The only thing is, you need a special uh, a special tool to. Uh, to close these these things, can't see. As you push it in, and now it is all uh, crimped up, as you can see. So you need that. I got this at HBM, as you can see. Now there are other types of connectors, bullet connectors, uh, things like this, the big ones for uh, starter cables, those kinds of things. They're uh, big and small. Uh, and also you need tools to crimp these down. So for these things like this, you can use that one. Um, so that is what you need. And there's also special tools like this one, which have special bits you can replace. So that is another one. I think I got these on eBay, I think. I can't remember, I bought this a long time ago. But it came with different mouthpieces so you can change it. So that has those two, three, oh yeah, are connectors. So you can, uh, now this is a wire stripper. And, oh, it's really handy, really. Okay, you can also use the other one I've got, which I've used forever, which is something like this. This is like old school. Uh, it works just as fine. Uh, now another thing you need are of course plier cutters like these, which is uh, I think essential. Uh, what else do you need? Well, obviously you need wire. This is a uh, small gauge wire, and you can get this with the uh, with M unit as a set. And I've got thicker gauge as well for other uh, purposes. Now another thing you're gonna need once you start connecting stuff. Is the multimeter. This is well an essential part if you want to measure continuity or try and find faults later on. 
you're really gonna need this. It's got a lot of different settings. There are simpler ones, but they are not really that expensive. But as you can see, it's, start, it's starting to add up. So um, there's the multimeter. I got this tip from Classic Octane. Now, it's these pretty cool connectors. You can just flip these little thingies. Take a wire, stick it in there, like so. Close it, and you've got a connection. That's really good. And the great part about it is you can open it and you can take it out again. These are really good. I thought it was a really good tip. So uh, you can, I got these at Tool Station as well. You can connect wires like that or you connect wires with. This is a cool way it to solder in here. So you put a wire there and a wire there. You heat it up, the solder starts to melt and it will connect the wires. And also this will shrink. So you'll have a watertight uh, seal. A solder iron and some solder for electrical uh, use. So that is 60, 10, 40 lead which I think is uh, what's best to use. And you can use that to connect two wires together and then use the heat shrink to make it nice and tight and waterproof. So that's the solder. Well, I think we're getting there now. There's also this uh, tape you can use. Oh, shit, sorry. There's also this tape that you can use uh, to connect wires. Um, yeah, so in different colors. In the end, uh, stuff like this. Now uh, this is from a computer, but it's basically the same stuff. Which is a, uh, I don't know how you call this. How do you call these things? A sock or whatever. A cover. But you can, you have to pre-feed this, of course. But then, uh, yeah, you can get nice tight loom. Or you can use special like tape around it which makes it easier if you've already connected everything up, but that will make everything nice and tidy. Now, the other thing that I'm, I'm gonna use, you don't have to do this, is this button, the M button, uh, the Mo button actually. And what this does, uh, you can put this in the handlebars in the front and all the wires that you've got here are for like uh, left turn signal, right turn signal, start horn, brake, ground, and to the Mo unit. So you connect these to these uh, buttons, buttons like this, which are in the handlebar. And then you just have to run this green wire back to the M unit instead of running all these wires back to the M unit. So that's pretty cool. The only thing is that this thing is a digital signal. So I believe it's uh, easily interfered by uh, like uh, magnetic disturbances. So. We'll have to see how that goes, but it will make uh, wiring a bit easier. It's not essential, but it is uh, It is pretty cool. You go to the link, go to caferaiserwebshop.com, use my link, and uh, you should be able to find it there. At revivalcycles.com, you've got all these nice schematics um, to help you out and learn uh, something about how to wire the M unit into all of this stuff. Uh, I also got one from uh, Hedgehog Garage who uh, did it for the CX. I don't know where I've left it, but um, he made one especially for the Honda CX uh, 500. So you can look that up on his website. Uh, this is all from Revival. It's got a bit of things to explain how it works and uh, how you wire up the solenoid. As you can see over here. So this is just was a good piece of kit. Now, if you have a dedicated CDI, uh, like the Honda CX500 does, you need to wire in the CDI with a special relay. I thought I had to do that, but in the end I found out I don't. So, but if you want that relay, it's something like this. This is the relay, that's what it looks like. This is like a little uh, socket to put it in. I'll just take it out. I just want to take you over to the bike. Uh, the other thing you need is a fuse hold holder similar to this or uh, just different, but you need to put in a fuse between the starter solenoid and the uh, uh, M unit to protect the M unit. So 
So another thing you need are tie rips like these. Tie wraps. These are small ones and you can maybe you need some bigger ones, but they're cheap, they're strong, and they're essential. As you can see it's uh it's a pretty big spread to uh to do this. Basically that is it. Um with all of this stuff we should be able to get this bike wiring uh driving sorry <laughs> well the manual really helps it you just you really have to take your time to read this and just follow all the wires where they go and which bit is connected to what and if you just take your time and just don't be scared of it um as i was in the beginning um you should be okay and also if you have questions you can always Put them in the comment below if I can help you. And if I can't help you, maybe somebody else who's watching these videos can help you out. So that was today's video all about the electrics and the stuff that you need to wire up a cafe racer like the Suzuki I've got. Uh, it may differ from bike to bike, but this is basically what you're gonna need. It may not seem like a lot of stuff and when you put it all together, it's quite a lot of gear you need. So um, be aware of that when you spend the money, it's, it's gonna add up pretty quickly. If you want to buy any of the stuff you saw, you go to caferacerwebshop.com, use the link in my description. It will help out my channel and it will help them sell the stuff they got to you uh, and you will get great stuff. So please do that. For now, uh, thank you for watching. See you in the next video. I'll be wiring up the M unit, I think, in that one. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Bye bye.